Good afternoon, Captain Justin DeLeon here, and today we're going to be talking about breaching operations. Today we're going to talk about this from more of a general standpoint and really talk about the fundamentals of what a breach looks like. We're going to kind of come at, at the perspective uh, from a light standpoint when soldiers are on foot, uh, but all these fundamentals work as well when it comes to mounted operations, and those are really more of the uh, more complex and more intense breaching operations is when you're doing it as a combined arms battalion or, or uh, some, some element with mounted vehicles. But uh, we're going to talk about it here a little bit on the light side. So first of all, breaching operations. What does it mean to breach something? All right. What it means is that the enemy has laid obstacles in our way of getting to where we need to go. All right. So a lot of times, as you'll see if you look at my perimeter defense video, part of a defensive operation is laying out obstacles. All right. <clears throat> and whether we're laying out obstacles or the enemy is laying out obstacles, you do so for one reason. All right. So obstacles are meant to funnel us into a specific location. All right. That location is typically called either a kill zone or an engagement area. And once those obstacles funnel us into one of these areas, okay, we are then meant to be fixed. So they'll use another obstacle inside of a kill zone or an engagement area to fix us in place, basically get us stuck there, and then lay down the hammer, meaning hitting us with direct fires of all kinds and indirect fires, uh, air support, whatever they can find to defeat us and to kill us at that single point, all right? That is the goal of obstacles, whether we do it on the friendly side or we do it from our adversaries, okay? So let's talk about real fast the four types of obstacles that we'll likely encounter. There's four main types of obstacles, okay? One is a blocking obstacle. All right, the symbology looks like this, all right? The symbology for obstacles is typically green, as you can see on my one I've got laid out here. A blocking obstacle, simply put, is to make you stop in place, make a route impassable, make it so you cannot go this direction. It is not, a, it is not an option. You cannot go that way, all right, simply put. Another one is a turning obstacle, all right? A turning obstacle essentially is just trying to turn you a certain way. Okay, like I said, obstacles are meant to funnel us into an engagement area. So if we're moving towards the south and the enemy wants to move us north into an engagement area, a, a turning obstacle to move us north can be very effective. All right, so it naturally kind of shifts us that direction. Another one is called a disruption obstacle. All right, and this is meant to disrupt our movement. All right, this is just meant to hold, to slow us or delay us. And usually a disruption obstacle is oriented a certain direction as well. So it kind of gets us moving either north, south, east, or west based on where the enemy wants us to go. It doesn't turn us necessarily like a turning obstacle, but it does kind of shift us a certain direction. All right, and it definitely impedes our movement. It slows us, it interdicts us, and it makes our movement more difficult, okay? And last, what I talked about earlier, is a fixing obstacle, all right? A fixing obstacle is meant to fix us in place, all right? And these are typically found in engagement areas or in kill zones. Once we get in there, either minefield, barbed wire, ditches, whatever the enemy the cap capabilities are, gets us into that engagement area, gets us stuck in place, all right? And then it gives them the opportunity or uh, to exploit that and kill us and destroy us with all fires that they have imaginable laid onto us in a single point, all right? So that's why a fixing obstacle is there and that's why it's likely the most dangerous. All right, so those are the four obstacles that we will likely encounter uh, during our operations, okay? So again, the enemy is going to try and get us to go a certain direction or they're trying to block a certain route. So a lot of times it's advantageous for us to push through an obstacle, whether it's turning, blocking, disrupting, fixing, all right? Push through it. Obviously, if we're in an engagement area and we're in a fixing obstacle, We've got to get through that obstacle before we die, before we're killed, okay? But a lot of times a blocking obstacle, if they're trying to block an avenue approach, kind of like what I have here, all right, they've closed off this avenue approach, all right, for a reason. Maybe they see, they, they believe that that side of their objective, uh, this is my objective here, four buildings or so, maybe, maybe they believe that the southwest corner of their objective is the weakest and most difficult to defend, and so they've blocked that route, okay? Maybe it's advantageous for us then to try and punch a hole in that obstacle and assault that direction, all right? Again, it's, it, it just depends on the, it depends on the scenario, but at, at a lot of times we decide that it's more advantageous 
for us to push through the obstacle, and then go through a, lane, a different lane that they've give, made open for us. Because again, if they've, met, if they've left the lane open for us, they want us to go there, and they likely are prepared uh, to defeat us in that area. Okay, so there's five main fundamentals uh, and steps when we're breaching something, okay? Uh, again, breaching, moving through an obstacle to get to an objective, all right? So what we do is we have an acronym uh, to talk about these fundamentals in steps that are in order, in order in which they're supposed to be done, okay? And the acronym that we use is called SOSERA. All right, this is one of those key acronyms in the Army that you always want to remember, okay? So SOSERA goes in order. So first, we suppress, okay? Then we obscure. And again, a lot of these, some of these are happening at the same time, but we'll talk about that here in a second. We then secure, and again, reduce, and we then lastly, of course, we assault. All right, these are the five steps that we do in order to breach an obstacle and then continue on with our attack. All right, so let's talk about each step and what they look like, all right? Also, actually, real fast, I want to talk about there's three main elements that we have when we're breaching an obstacle. This is when you're on the light side or you're on the heavy mechanized side, okay? We typically have a support element, all right? We typically have a breaching element, the one that's actually going to be breaching the obstacle. And last, we have our assault element. These are the guys that are going to continue on the fight, okay? So again... The five fundamentals, SOSRA, five steps, and three, the three elements, okay? So, really, the support is pretty much responsible for these two, the first two steps, suppressing and obscuring, okay? Uh, the breach uh, does a little bit of obscuration as well, they can add to that, but it's not their job necessarily, it's not their primary task, okay? So, the support is out here, and let's say we're trying to breach this obstacle, in this area right here. All right, let's say we're trying to breach a lane through that obstacle and then continue on with our assault towards the objective, okay? So we look at this and we say, okay, we're gonna try and breach in a specific area, all right? So now we have to do some analysis and identify what enemy can affect that area because obviously we're gonna, we're gonna pick a single point of the obstacle. We can't just reduce and destroy the entire obstacle, we got to get through a single point, all right? And just for your essay, this obstacle that I've drawn here, we're calling it triple strand seawire, okay? So we have uh, enemies put some triple strand seawire up, which is difficult to get through. Uh, it takes a conserve amount of effort uh, to punch a hole in that, okay? Now we got to look at what enemy can affect this. So let's say we got, some, we got an enemy uh, position here, and let's say we got like an enemy OP here, all right? So they can all lay fires on that direct, on that specific point where we want to we want to breach the obstacle and then assault through it, so we have to make sure that the enemy that can affect this area are suppressed. Okay, um, again, it might not be as simple as this. There might be a lot more that we have to suppress. It might be a lot less. It just depends on where the obstacle is. Okay, but we have to make sure that we have a support by fire. Oops. We have to make sure we have a support by fire. that is suppressing these directions, okay? Again, your support by fire might be down here, might be up here, wherever it is, but it's ensuring that we are suppressing any enemy I, that can see this obstacle, that can see the lane, that can lay fires onto it, all right? That is the biggest part, okay? All right, so once we're suppressing, all right, we also need to do what's called obscuration, okay? So again, this is why, uh, have you ever heard the, 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 the thought that sometimes combat engineers is the most dangerous job in the Army? A lot of times engineers are the ones doing this, and especially in a more complex breach where you're doing like combined arms, where you're using miklicks and, and trying to blow holes in large obstacles or trying to bridge over an anti-tank uh, anti, uh, gap or something like that. Okay, engineers are gonna get in the mix and it's very dangerous because all fires are going to be focused on that point where we're trying to breach because the enemy knows we got to stop at that point. But anyways, the point is, is we need to obscure this. We need to make it so people cannot see what's going on in this area. All right. So a lot of times what that looks like is it looks like smoke. All right. We can lay down smoke 
to obscure this area, I'm going to use some yellow here for smoke. All right. Now the enemy generally knows where to shoot, but they're just shooting blind now. Okay. And we can have cover through smoke. And again, this obscuration, it can be laid in through um, artillery, it can be laid in through mortars, it can be laid in through uh, rifle grenades, whatever you have and whatever you're able to do to lay smoke or some level of obscuration at the point or in the vicinity of the point where you're going to breach. Okay? You can also use smoke as a deception because the enemy knows that we're going to obscure uh, wherever we're trying to breach. So you can lay smoke up here too. Maybe the enemy thinks that we're going to uh, go ahead and breach up there. There's lots of ways you can use smoke to your advantage. Uh, but you definitely need to obscure the point in which you're trying to breach. Okay, and so once we've suppressed the enemy, that can affect the point that we're trying to breach, and we've obscured the same location, so the enemy can't really see what's actually going on there, now this is when we can start to do the breach, okay? And so now this is when our breaching force steps in, okay? Our breaching force can help with obscuration, especially if they're close and they can use rifle, uh, rifle smoke grenades. Uh, to help assist, but the, right, the, the breach's main job is to secure and reduce, okay? They've got to do both those jobs. So the breaching element is now going to move forward, okay? And they, first of all, they've got to secure this objective, all right? And really what it means to secure is you get to a point where the enemy cannot affect this area any longer, okay? So securing doesn't mean, hey, I just walk up here and stand here. Now look, I'm securing the obstacle. It doesn't matter if you can stand there and secure the obstacle if there's a machine gun still pointed at it. All right, the point is, is they might have to actually move through the obstacle and defeat this enemy over here a little bit, all right? Or basically put enough fires down on the enemy as well to keep them from shooting, okay? Something to note too is a lot of times that uh, we're doing a breach, we don't have to secure it for a long time. We might only need to secure it for a couple minutes and that's enough time for our assault force to actually move through, all right, which we'll talk about here in a sec. But the point is, you gotta get to a point where it's secured, meaning it is safe, and your assault force is able to pass through without taking fire, without taking detrimental fire from the enemy. All right, so we have our, our force move up, okay? And you typically have to get security on the, for, on the front near side and the far side. And these guys are able to hold off enemy on this side, and these guys are able to hold off enemy to the flanks, and to direct traffic in, okay? So once we have security there, then whatever assets we have, they're gonna go and actually create this lane, okay? They're gonna go in. And now, if it's triple strand C wire, we probably have wire cutters, and we're just cutting open this lane, okay? Again, if it's like a combined arms uh, movement, then we're probably cutting, uh, we're probably either blowing Miklix, or we're uh, blowing mines up, or whatever we're doing to get through this, get through this, but anyways, we get through it, we reduce it, and again, then, then really is when we can secure the far side. And once it's secure, and it's still obscured, okay, now this is the time when we can look back and call for our assaulting element to move in, okay? So again, one mistake that a lot of people make is they don't have enough elements identified for what they're doing. So a lot of times they'll give the breaching element the job of breaching and then also assaulting. Nope, you gotta have a force here, I'll just put like a little a squ infantry squad as the assault. You got to have a force here standing by at full combat power, ready to move forward and exploit through here. Okay, so and it's got to be incredibly incredible timing. All right, so there's got to be both visual signals uh, and audio signals, whether it's through FM comms. But you have to have a great pace plan between the breaching element and the assault element to make sure that they can move forward. Okay. So once it's reduced, meaning let's say in this instance, we cut through the wire and the lane is now open, okay? The assaulting element needs to hit there right as soon as possible. All right, and so really the goal is, to time this perfectly, the goal would be, hey, the moment the lane opens, the assault force is really 10 feet away and they're pushing through. Now, is that very realistic? No, but this force needs to know how important the timing is, how quickly they need to get through that, that breach, okay? So really, the moment that lane's open, the leader of this element should be communicating through their pace plan to the leader of this element and saying, hey man, it's time, move forward and push through, okay? And now this element can move forward, it can push through, and it can go accomplish. And maybe its job is to seize this objective, okay? And this support by fire 
can maybe stop focusing as much on the specific enemy that, can, that is uh, in charge of protecting the lane, and they can actually go and do a support by fire on the entire objective now, okay? But the point is, is that breach point, that is the decisive point in this operation, all right? And we've got to do these steps, okay? Again, that was a very general uh, overview of what it looks like, but if you follow those five fundamentals, you're going to be successful, especially if you're doing this in a light unit real quick when you got seat wire or you got a little minefield in front of you. This stuff works, okay? Again, three elements are required, all right? Security, you might have security out there in, in some form or fashion, especially if this is a raid, you've obviously got security that's isolating the objective, okay? But the point is, is you've got to have a support element who is going to, who's going to suppress the enemy and then also obscure the point in which you're going to breach, okay? You've got to have a breaching element that is going to secure the breach point and then also reduce the obstacle, meaning, all right, make a lane in the obstacle that someone can move through. And then you have to have a third force, an assault force, that is standing by, and the moment the obstacle is reduced, they're assaulting through and they're executing that decisive, uh, decisive operation on the objective. Okay? All right, I hope this was, uh, some, you learned something here. Again, SOSRA is the best way to do this, and it's the most widely recognized. I hope, uh, hope you feel comfortable breaching something. Definitely employ, employ these fundamentals, and you'll see positive effects on the battlefield. Again, I'm Captain Justin DeLeon, and Rangers lead the way.